In 2016, a couple was walking up this dirt path on this wooded hillside when they came up to this huge barbed wire fence. And all over this fence were signs saying no trespassing and warning people that what was on the other side of this fence was very dangerous. But the couple ignored these signs and slipped through a break in the fence to the other side and just kept on walking. Minutes later, that couple would come face to face with the monster. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So, if that's of interest to you, please offer to do the like button's dishes, but be sure to leave all of the cups and bowls right side up inside of their dishwasher. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. became known as a bit of a thrill seeker, primarily because she would do something called car surfing, which is exactly what it sounds like. She would climb onto the exterior of cars and hold on to the roof while somebody else drove it around. In addition to seeking out these physical thrills, Raquel was also drawn to psychological ones, like going to places that were supposedly haunted and seeing if she could spook herself. Following high school, Raquel kind of calmed down and became less of the wild teenager she was known for being, and instead she really focused on building a life and a career for herself. And so she would go to college and she would earn her degree in surgical technologies, and then by 2009 she was employed full-time as a surgical assistant in Dayton. Also around that time she had her first child, a son who she adored. But despite creating this life full of stereotypically adult, mature things like having a career and starting a family, deep down, Raquel was still very much the thrill-seeking wild teenager she was back in high school. But as an adult, she just never had time to go seek out those thrills. So with that in mind, fast forward to April of 2016. By this point, Raquel is 26 years old. And that month, a very rare weekend popped up where Raquel did not have to work and she didn't have any childcare responsibilities. And so wanting to take advantage of this free time, Raquel asked her boyfriend, 41-year-old David Nee, if he would join her on a road trip that weekend to Louisville, Kentucky, where Raquel wanted to check out the infamously scary Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Back in the 1900s, Waverly Hills was a place where tuberculosis patients were sent. Tuberculosis, or TB for short, is an infection of the lungs and it can be deadly. Today, there's a cure for it, but back in the early 1900s, there wasn't. And so most of the people who went to Waverly Hills died there, and usually very slowly and painfully and in total isolation from their families, because in virtue of being sent to Waverly Hills, they were affected being quarantined to stop the spread of the disease. Waverly Hills would eventually shut down permanently in 1961 because by that point the cure had been found and after it shut down the building basically just sat there. Nobody else came in and turned it into anything else and so this building is basically abandoned and lots of people began sneaking in to see what it was like in there and a shocking number of these trespassers reported seeing ghosts inside. Today the sanatorium is still very very much in the same condition it was left in, but the Waverly Hills Historical Society has stepped in and made it very hard for people to sneak into the building. However, knowing people do want to go in and look around, the Historical Society has begun offering guided tours of the sanatorium, and these tours are given exclusively at night to increase the spooky effect. And so David, who had only been dating Raquel for a month when she asked him to come with her to the sanatorium, Sanatorium, he was not really that keen on doing this. It did not really appeal to him to go walking around this totally terrifying place, but he could tell it was important to Raquel. She was really excited about it, and so he agreed to go. A few days later, on the late afternoon of April 23rd, the new couple left Raquel's place. They climbed into the car, and they began driving south. Three hours later, they arrived in Louisville, and they stopped to get dinner, and then after they were done eating, they looked at the time and realized it was only about 6.45 p.m., and the tour they had scheduled at the sanatorium was not until 10 p.m. 
them, so they had a few hours to kill. And before David could suggest anything, Raquel already had the perfect idea of how they should kill this time. She told David that earlier that day, she had learned about a spot just outside of Louisville that might actually be more terrifying than the sanatorium they had come all this way to see. And so Raquel wanted to spend these few hours checking out this new spooky spot. This spooky spot was a rickety old, narrow, abandoned looking bridge called the Pope Lick Trestle. It's located just east of downtown Louisville in this heavily wooded area. The bridge is about 800 feet long, and at its highest point, right in the middle of the bridge, it's about 90 to 100 feet off the ground. And this bridge connects the tops of two of the bigger rolling hills in the area. But the bridge's physical appearance has nothing to do with why it's considered so spooky. The reason the Pope Lick Trestle has become a central part of Kentucky folklore is because locals say there is a monster called the Pope Lick Monster that lives underneath the bridge. It's half goat, half man, and when anyone is near this bridge at night, this monster is supposed to come out from underneath this bridge. And then what happens next is very ambiguous. It kind of depends on who you're talking to, but generally speaking, once the Poplic monster has emerged and it sees you, you're dead. Now, how you die ranges from the monster leaping out and attacking you with an axe to the monster using some sort of mind control to lure you up onto the bridge where you leap off. David, after hearing this suggestion, was again not really that keen to go do this really terrifying sounding thing, but seeing the excitement in his girlfriend's face, he agreed to go. And so the two left the restaurant, they climbed back in the car, and they drove for about 15 or 20 minutes to the Pope Lick Trestle Bridge. The bridge actually passed over a relatively main road, and so the couple parked just off the side of this main road, and then once they were outside, they began looking for a pathway up this hillside to get up to the bridge. And very quickly, they found a well-worn dirt path that snaked up the side of this wooded hillside that looked very much like it would bring them up to the bridge. So with Raquel in front and David behind her, they began walking up this dirt path. And as they're walking, they start to see signs that clearly say, no trespassing. But they ignore them because they're looking at this path thinking, okay, lots of people clearly come up here, so we've got to be okay. And so they keep on walking up this path and they're getting closer and closer to the top of this hill where they think it's going to connect with this bridge. And right as they're getting close, they see there's this huge chain link fence this eight foot tall chain link fence with barbed wire across the top that extends in either direction out of view. And so the couple walks up to this fence and there are more signs that say no trespassing, private property, and there are additional warning signs saying that what is on the other side of this fence is also just plain dangerous, so turn around and leave. Every fall, when the leaves start to turn colors and the weather starts to get cool, people flock in droves to their nearest coffee shop to order a pumpkin spice latte. And every year when I see this phenomenon occur, I think to myself, how hasn't anyone started a seasonal eel teeth and milk sandwich restaurant? It's such an obvious compliment to the pumpkin spice latte. Well, this year I decided enough was enough. I was going to fill this massive hole in the marketplace and become the eel teeth and milk sandwich king. However, I pretty much immediately ran into a very big issue. My five mini poodles that I hired to help me grow and run this restaurant franchise instantly began to struggle with some basic tasks that I had outlined in the job description, like being able to hold things with your thumbs and speaking a human language. And so just a couple of days ago, as I'm sitting in my office trying for the hundredth time to teach these mini poodles how to speak English, and how to use their thumbs, my pet frog, Seagull Lung, came flying in and slapped me right in the coccyx and said, Papa, tu as voix! Papa, tu dois voir, Papa, 
got two devoirs, ZipRecruiter, which of course in French means, Dad, we need to use ZipRecruiter. And boy, was old Lange, right? <laughs> ZipRecruiter, which is the number one rated hiring site according to G2 Satisfaction Ratings as of January 1st, 2022, uses its powerful technology to find and match the right candidates with your job. And then you can easily go through all of these recommended candidates and invite only your top choices to apply for your job, meaning you won't have to hire as many unqualified mini poodles. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at my exclusive web address. ZipRecruiter.com slash Mr. Ballin. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Mr. Ballin, or you can click the link in the description below. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. As Raquel and David are staring at all these signs in this fence, they see, not far from the path, somebody had clearly bent two of the fence posts and created a narrow gap in the fence that you could slip through. And so from David and Raquel's perspective, that looked like the way other trespassers must have found their way up to the bridge, and so it must be safe. And so once again, the couple disregarded all the warnings, they made their way over to this gap in the fence, they both slipped through, and they kept on walking up the hill. Just a couple of minutes later, they reached this clearing, which was at the top of this hill. And once they were in this clearing, they were able to turn and they could actually see the bridge. It was only a couple hundred feet away from them. And it was totally intimidating. By this point, it's totally dark out. And from their perspective, all they see is this very narrow bridge that they know is 100 feet off the ground at certain points. And they can see there's no guardrails on either side of this bridge. It would have almost looked like a tightrope kind of extended ending off into the darkness. But even if the couple was really intimidated by the sight of this bridge and with all these warning signs before it, they were able to put their fear aside and just keep on going. And so with David now in the lead and Raquel behind him, they walked the couple of hundred feet over to the start of this narrow bridge. And when they got there, without actually stepping onto the bridge, David came to a stop. He turned around to face Raquel and he gestured for her to come stand next to him so they could take a selfie with the bridge in the background because David at this point is thinking we're not going to go on this bridge we're just going to look at this bridge take some pictures and then we'll go but Raquel who he's looking at gesturing to come stand with him just walks right past him onto the bridge and takes several steps out onto this narrow rickety old thing and then she stops turns around and gestures for David to come with her and walk across the entire bridge and David again is having his second thoughts but but he sees Raquel wants to do this, and so he agrees to go. After they had walked about 100, maybe 200 feet across this bridge, the two of them just started laughing because it was totally exhilarating what they were doing. Not so much the quest for the Popelik monster, but rather the very real risk they were taking walking this tightrope bridge in the middle of the night. The couple would continue to very cautiously but quickly make their way across this bridge, and when they reached about the halfway point, when they were at the highest point from the ground, the bridge itself begins to shake. And then from behind them, they hear this loud grinding sound. And so the couple, they whip their heads around and they see there are these two bright glowing lights that are looking right at them all the way on the start of the bridge. And they realize it's a train. When Raquel and David walked up that dirt path and snuck through the fence and reached the top of the hill and could actually see the Pope Lick Trestle Bridge, they would have also seen the train tracks in the hillside that clearly extended onto the Pope Lick Trestle and went across the bridge. This was a train bridge. They would have seen that. But it's assumed that the couple who didn't live in the area and so didn't know much about the Pope Lick Trestle, it's assumed they thought, well, you know, this is a train bridge, but it's got to be abandoned. It certainly looks abandoned, and it does. It looks totally old. It does not look active, even though it is. Or the couple thought, well, this is just an old train bridge. It might be active, but surely no train is going to come through anytime soon. We can get across the bridge before a train arrives. But, of course, they were wrong. When the couple turned around and saw these two headlights bearing down on them, they quickly realized they would not be able to outrun this train. The train's clearly trying to stop. It has seen them. It's hitting its brakes. It's sounding its horn. But it's just clear.
clearly moving too quickly, so they cannot run to the other side to safety. And because this bridge was meant for a single train to pass through, there was no other track they could just jump onto to avoid being hit. And there were no walkways on either side of this railway. And so literally all they had was the track that this train was going to cross over and they were on it. And so with no other choices, David yells to Raquel that they have to climb down and hang off the side of this bridge. Now there were these wooden slats that ran underneath the rails. They ran perpendicular to the rails and these wooden slats kind of extended off the edge of the bridge on either side just a couple of inches. And so in theory, if you were holding onto the outside of one of these wooden slats and kind of dangling off the edge of the bridge, a train could cross those tracks and not run over your hands or fingers. You would just have to hold on that whole time as the train is rumbling through. And so David, he flops down onto his stomach and he's trying to lower himself as fast as he can as this train is getting closer and closer and he's yelling for Raquel to do the same thing but she's not really moving very quickly and finally David he gets in position he's hanging off the edge of this bridge on these wooden slats and he sees Raquel she's not quite there and then the train comes flying through it strikes Raquel and sends her flying off the bridge to the ground below David would somehow manage to hold on the whole time as this train went past him and then once the train had passed him he pulled himself back up onto the tracks he ran the rest of the way across the bridge he went down that hillside and when he found Raquel Cal, it was immediately apparent that she was deceased. In the end, the railroad was not issued any citations or sued for negligence. It was determined they did their due diligence by setting up that eight foot tall barbed wire fence with all those signs telling people to stay back and warning people about the hazards of going past this fence. And so it was actually David who got in trouble for this tragedy. He was cited and charged with a felony of unlawfully disrupting and or delaying a train causing financial damages. He would plead to a lesser charge of trespassing and and would be fined $2,300. Shockingly, this tragedy is just one of many that have occurred on the Popelik Trestle Bridge. Since the bridge's construction in the 1800s, there have been dozens of people who have died on this bridge, and several of these deaths, many of them fairly recent, the last 20 or so years, have occurred under the same conditions as Raquel's. People went looking for the Popelik monster and then were struck by a train. So that's going to do it. If you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done this already, please offer to do the like buttons dishes, but be sure to leave the cups and bowls right side up in their dishwasher. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. We now have a podcast called the Mr. Ballin Podcast that puts out brand new exclusive stories on Monday mornings. And on Thursday mornings, we put out remastered audio of our best YouTube videos. That podcast is available on all platforms right now but in just a couple of days on november 1st 2022 it will only be available on amazon music we now have a registered 501c3 charitable organization called the mr ballin foundation that makes it as easy as possible for you to join me my family and my team in supporting those whose lives have been most impacted by violent and heinous crimes monthly donors to the mr ballin foundation honor them society will receive free gifts and exclusive of invites to special live events. But the real reward is helping to create a new ending to the story for victims of violent crime. Go to mrballin.foundation and click on Get Involved to join the Honor Them Society today. We also have two additional YouTube channels, Mr. Ballin Shorts and Mr. Ballin and Espanol. We also put out near daily content on TikTok, Facebook, and Snapchat. All of those channels are just called Mr. Ballin. If you want to get in touch with me, please follow me on any major social media platform and then send me a direct message. My username is just at Mr. Ballin, and I really do read the majority of my DMs. We also have some really cool merchandise, so head on over to shopmrballin.com to have a look. And if you have a story suggestion, please submit it to our subreddit just called Mr. Ballin. It's linked in the description below. So whether I see you on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, YouTube, Facebook, other YouTube channels, the podcast, wherever, just know that I really appreciate your support. And until next time, that's going to do it. See ya.